In this video I will try to introduce you to Octave, a great uh, open source tool which allows you to do simple manipulations with matrices and also perform uh, relatively simple quantum mechanical calculations. So I have already opened the Octave for you and made it small enough to fit the window and now we will basically just uh, look at the basic usage of uh, the matrix capabilities of Octave. So we need to be able to define matrices, for example, a matrix which will represent our Hamiltonian, so I will call it H. Uh, for that we use this type of brackets and now uh, the matrix will be specified using the rows. So what I'm writing here is the first row of a 3x3 three three matrix. So this is the first row the uh, bracket clo is closing and to create a new row I would use a semicolon so this way I will define a matrix 3x3 three three and it will be a unity matrix okay now I close the last uh, bracket if I do this and do not write a semicolon behind the whole line uh, octave after pressing enter which I'm going to do now will repeat what I have what I have done it will say H equals and now show the matrix all right so we have this very simple 3 by 3 matrix and now let's make it into a Hamiltonian or let's define something which looks a little bit more uh, as our Hamiltonian you can clear you can clear H using this command this means that H is no more available it's not defined. Now we will define it as a 2 by 2 matrix and we will include uh, also some off diagonal terms. So we will keep let's say the number 1 uh, that is energy in some units on the diagonal element and we will define some sort of a coupling which will be smaller than 1 it will be 0 0.1. Okay so this is our matrix symmetric Hermitian matrix representing a Hamiltonian of some of some system. So if I now, now write a semicolon behind the line uh, Octave will not say anything. I can always write H without semicolon at the end and it will show me how it looks like. I can also write disp H and now semicolon or not semicolon doesn't matter and it will just show uh, value of H. The difference here is that uh, it doesn't write this H equals etc. Okay, so uh, the most important routine or most important functionality that Octave provides for us now is uh, the fact that we can very easily diagonalize this matrix. So to diagonalize the matrix we use a very simple routine which takes it's called Eich as eigenvalues, eigensystems, eigenvectors, etc. And it takes as its argument the matrix that we have defined before. This is the matrix we want to diagonalize. So if I just press this, it will show me only as an answer, as you see, it will show me the eigenvalues of the matrix. That is uh, basically the diagonal elements of the matrix in a representation or in a basis where this matrix is diagonal. All right, so we see that you know, this has actually some very simple structure uh, for a dimer for this system of two states uh, with equal energies. The difference between the eigenenergies is twice the coupling, that is, it's 0 0.2 in this case. And one of the energy is pushed down by 0 0.1 and the other energy is pushed up by 0 0.1, always by J. This holds for a heterodimer, that is for a case where we have on both sides, both states that interact, we have, to, uh, have the same energy. Now, uh, this is not all the stuff I can get uh, out of this uh, little routine. So if I write, I don't know, capital E, which will represent energy equals like H I get as a result a vector I mean E is now a vector 
factor of these uh, eigenvalues. Now that's not really all I want. I also want a matrix of eigenvectors. I want to get all the eigenvectors there are because with them, using them or using this matrix built out of the eigenvectors, I can perform the transformation of the Hamiltonian from this non-diagonal to the diagonal basis. So in that case, if I want this, I write the following. Uh, in octave, routines can return not just one result. It can, uh, it, a, a routine can return many arguments, so many, many results. So in this case, I will call this matrix of vectors uh, S, and I will again call, and now it's going to be matrix. E will be matrix. We are redefining it here. Uh, it's a matrix of, um, it's basically the diagonal matrix of uh, which represents h in the diagonal basis so if i press this now i didn't put a semicolon at the end so it's writing out s s equals now some matrix which has a very interesting form uh, and e it says about e that it's a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix which with uh, the eigenvalues on the diagonal okay so this is basically all the information that that's the routine we will need to perform calculations of the dynamics of our little systems represented by the Hamiltonian H. Let us investigate a little bit about this uh, matrix S. I said that this matrix S is composed of the eigenvectors, eigenstates actually, eigenvectors of the matrix H eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and uh, somewhere where else we also said that uh, S actually uh, is composed of these vectors I mean they, they form they form the columns of, of the, the matrix these eigen eigenvectors now um, how can I how can I see that for example I can try to multiply multiply this uh, first vector in S I can multiply that by by h. So let's have a look. So first s, that there is a easy way to access a vector which is inside a matrix uh, in octave. So I want to have a first. Uh, let's say I want to have a first row. So that would look like this. First index is one, and the second index is three. So I put a, a colon there, and this will give me the first row. So in the other way, that is colon first, I will get a first column column yeah. all right so this is the column and this should represent one of the eigenvectors of the matrix H so I call this eigenvector V1 V1 equals now s colon 1 so this is the first vector you see V is now the first vector and it's standing and now well I just say H multiply with V1 Okay, H multiplied with V1, if we claim that uh, V1 is the eigenvector of this Hamiltonian, it should give me back the eigenvector just multiplied by a constant. And I can see here that it really does. What the constant is, it, this is the original vector V1, uh, but it's multiplied by uh, the eigenvalue, the first eigenvalue, and that first eigenvalue is 0 0.9. So now, if I would take h multiplied by v1, divide it by the first eigenvalue, that is our matrix E and its first element, first diagonal element, I should get back the v1. And I actually do. So everything works. I can even you know, take now separately the, uh, the vectors inside the S. And let's uh, go one step further towards the actual transformation that we want to do. That is the transformation of the Hamiltonian from the basis in which it is now, the non-diagonal, into the diagonal. I mean, we already got that. It's inside this, this E. But for our future calculations, we should be able to do this transformation sort of explicitly. For doing that, we also saw that we need a 
one more one more matrix we need a matrix which should be the inverse of s i will call it s1 and s1 the inverse matrix could be either calculated using the inf routine inf s or it could be calculated because uh, we have seen that for this particular uh, type of matrices the transposition is enough transpose s yeah and you see the funny thing that i am transposing s or i am inverting s i'm getting all the time the same matrix in fact s is its own i uh, its own inverse so if i multiply s with s I'm getting a unity matrix. So this case is actually extremely simple, extremely easy. It's not always like that. Actually, it's never like that. Except for this particular simple case, it's very rare that a matrix would be its in inverse. All right. Um, another thing that we could see is uh, that this matrix uh, routine, this this Ike uh, routine, is already given giving us orthonormal vectors. That's as you see, uh, as as you see here, those vectors are normalized so that when I multiply them, two of them together, I, I'm getting one. That's how I would get this uh, um, this property that S multiplied by S is equal unity matrix. Okay, so now I have everything in my hands. Uh, somewhere else we have written that if I take S inverse multiply by H and then multiply that by S again I'm going to get a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal and this indeed I do so this uh, S1 multiplied by H multiplied by S which represents the S inverse multiplied by Hamiltonian multiplied by S this is the transformation that we will be using for all the other work uh, on the, let's say, propagation of uh, Schrodinger equation or for that matter even density matrix equations for closed systems. I think this is enough now. In the next video we'll uh, make few more steps towards uh, actually calculating something and we will also introduce scripts so that we don't have to repeat all the typing all the time inside the octave here.